What if I told you that you were being hit from both sides, the economic drag as well as the inflationary part? And if you don't pay attention to this information, you will never see it coming. Let's begin right here. We are talking about inflation and it's coming from all different aspects. One of those aspects being supply chain issues and weather issues. World's food supply faces new threat from lack of rain in India. Total rice planted area has shrunk 13% due to lack of rainfall. And we are watching this all over the place where different crops have simply not been able to be planted because of droughts and other weather issues. And we have this factor here. In the UK, you're seeing people ca cannot even water their garden anymore. They have this temporary use ban. Do not water your garden, people, because there is simply not enough to go around. So we have this, people paying more than ever before, and yet there seems to be shortages of just about everything. So while we're paying higher prices, we're not getting more as a result, and there's different reasons for it. But of course, then we look at the inflationary aspects, specifically when we talk about the Federal Reserve and the other central banks. In this video here, I'll talk about the Fed, I'll talk about what we're seeing with the Bank of England as well. Fed Governor Bowman sees, quote, similarly sized rate hikes ahead after three quarter point moves. So what's that mean? Well, it was 75 basis points previously. Similar would be 75 basis points. OK, maybe it's going to be 50. And that's kind of what I believe the base case would be. But this is one after another after another saying 75 is right on cue. Now, you might think to yourself, no. Nah, they're not going to do that. They're not going to go ahead and do this. They don't want to spook the market, so on. Look, we just had fantastic, according to them, fantastic jobs numbers. The unemployment rate ticked down again, 3.5%. We have, you know, a balance sheet that is just truly excessive and interest rates, which have moved up quite a bit at this point already. And so you look at each and every one of these data points and you have to ask yourself, why would they necessarily just stop, pivot, turn the other direction? There is no data to support that. And look, be honest, the stock market is doing well. We know this to be true. Okay. Quote, my view is that similarly size increases should be on the table until we see inflation declining in a consistent, meaningful, and lasting way. And that basically just suggests that, okay, the data doesn't show that at all. So it's not like we're going to, you know, get something tomorrow and it's just going to change everything. It's month after month. They're not able to just, you know, snap your fingers, change on a dime. I wanted to give you this as a little bit of insight in a historical context. Are you interested? Check it out and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. I give you the history. I give you the new stuff, the data, everything you need to know. This right here is showing us the previous part of this current cycle, 2015 up until 2018. And you look at what had happened. 25 basis points each and every time. It took three years to go through the increases. And now think about it. How fast do they get from zero to 2.5%? Well, here from March to July 2022, they did that in the same span. So what seems like basically just a few weeks, it was three years last time. So the rate at which we are increasing interest rates is truly dramatic and the markets are simply saying well, you know wake me up when things get hot and heavy well we're already heading in that direction we haven't seen a pace like this in a very long time and then of course we talk about the bank of england and that says here in this article out of the telegraph the federal reserve has raised interest rates by 0.75 percent that's the sec uh, second straight month in the most aggressive tightening since the 1980s. And then there's the important part, piling pressure on the Bank of England to stamp down harder on surging prices. So when one central bank, particularly the United States, does something, the other central banks have to go and do it as well. So that right there just 
gives you a little bit of understanding to remember it's not just one central bank acting they're all doing it in a concert you know that and then we had the you know the biz the bank uh you know some regard this as the the central bank of central banks okay but anyway the point here is that when we look at their actions they have a direct correlation to what you deal with in your daily life even if you don't think you're somehow involved i believe it's important to understand that you are now we get into the next aspect here which is what's happening with the economy with prices and of course all of it really being connected in with inflation and so on but let's look this german utility enbw plans 31 percent electricity bill hike my goodness think about that if you're paying a hundred dollars you're going to be paying 130 bucks i mean that is a huge increase when we talk about a percentage terms you look at about it in, in, in you know currency terms either way truly going to impact a lot of people very negatively and it could be because of a supply chain issue it could be because of a weather issue but what about all the activities that are going on from the central banks and of course from the government as well you cannot expand the monetary supply by such a great degree in such a short period of time without having negative effects. It is simply impossible. We've never seen it historically. UBS warns millionaire clients the pound could slump to a historic low on gas crisis. So again, is it because of one reason? Or is it because of another reason? We can look at the depths of that and we can make guesses and we could talk about this and that's fine but understand what it means to you. And the simple matter of fact is that these things are becoming more expensive. They're harder to come by. We are being restricted. There's capital controls. There's price controls that are going on everywhere. You, you know, you see different groups of people that are rioting and looting and protesting and all these different things. And we have civil unrest brewing just about everywhere. And what is being done to resolve it Ah, uh, that's right. Print more money. Well, let's talk about money right now because the number one buyer, I've told you this a hundred times for anybody who's been watching this channel, the number one buyer of stocks since the financial crisis has been the company itself. And there are many charts to show you the companies that do the most buybacks are the ones that perform the best. Not necessarily directly correlated, like if they just buy back more than the stock performs more. What I'm saying here is that if you look at the companies that do buybacks or a lot of buybacks, compare that to the companies that do few buybacks or no buybacks, then of course you see a huge difference. Huge difference in between the two. Now, how are those buybacks financed? And by the way, we're talking about stocks or companies that are basically buying back their own shares. When they do so, the price goes up. And so what's happening here is that these companies are buying that with debt, cheap debt. Things are changing. This article had something interesting to say. Share buybacks tax lag could spur rush to repurchase this year. And essentially what's happening here, they're apparently gonna put this through. I don't know if it's officially through yet, but they're going to put a tax, 1% tax on sh share buybacks. So now the companies are less inclined to do so. Okay. So if they do this, you know, it's going to have an impact. Okay? Whether or not it's going to have a direct impact and all, all of those details, that remains to be seen. But the point here is you put a tax on companies, eh, you know what, maybe not going to do that. And it makes the whole process less attractive. And so... They're rushing to do it now. Now, what that means is that you could see the biggest buyer pulling from next year, what they want to do next year into this year, creating more of an upward push. That's all. Now, you saw what happened with Iran and Russia and now Turkey, the same thing. Turkish banks are adopting Russian payment system. And this is coming from the leader of Turkey. It's important to see that. I'm not just pulling this out of a hat somewhere. The leader is actually saying, hey, 
we're going to be using their system. And imagine it like a Visa MasterCard type of thing. Russia's got it. M-I-R, mirror, I believe it's pronounced. But they're doing it. Okay, so they're going on there. So now you got Russia. Now you got Turkey. Now you've got Iran. And then, of course, other countries will adopt it. And that means that they are going away, not because, you know, it's a better system than SWIFT and the World Bank and the IMF. China, Russia, the BRICS nations, and several others are doing everything that they can to do away with the U.S. dollar as much as possible. Simple matter of fact. People believe it's this, you know, the, the reserve currency. There, you know, there's so much more to a reserve currency than what people think. It's just not the case. The U.S. dollar represents 59% of reserves. 59%. Now, that's the biggest, unquestionably the biggest, for, for different governments. But you got to understand, this is... There's, there's so much more to it. I've gotten to it in other videos. Don't have time today. The reason I bring this up is what we are seeing with the strength of the U.S. dollar puts additional pressure on other countries. They're saying, I can't deal with that. I can't go buying U.S. dollars to, get, to then go trade it in this other currency. My currency is simply too weak to do this. And so it's forcing these other countries to come up with creative ideas. So all of that to say what people are dealing with today is, you know, we're just being hit from all sides. Inflation over here. We're looking at taxation over here. We're looking at economic aspects, weather, you know, supply chain, everything. Truly everything. And so right now, what people can do, like my goodness, the people of the UK who are unable to water their own garden, if they were actually harvesting the water beforehand, it wouldn't be an issue. But most people are not prepared. Simple matter of fact. Simple matter of fact. You've got to get this going. You've got to start an online business. In my case here, while I've been able to see increases year over year growth, year over year, okay, multiple year over year growth in online e-commerce, um, you know, for a lot of people, they didn't see that. They didn't see consistent growth, explosive growth even throughout this period because they were perhaps just not in the right industry or are they trying to sell products that don't do well in both good times and in more difficult times. Okay, you got to know that. You, you got to choose a product you got to choose service even that's going to be there when times are tough and when times are good. Okay, so that's about it. I'm going to end the video there. If you're not subscribed already, you've got to do so, okay? Join the soon-to-be 282,000 subscribers here on the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.